Hello, this is Yeshua said my name. I wanted to take a few minutes of your time to not correct a video that I made the other day, but to clarify something that I was trying to say. Um, I was in communication with a brother uh, recently about a video that I made yesterday. Uh, the name of the video was uh, Satan Discourages Direct Access to God. Uh, it was not my intention to give the impression that the offices of teaching and pastoring are not needed. So if I did that, I do apologize humbly. I believe what I was stressing um, was that as teachers and pastors, I feel impressed of the Lord and I myself am a teacher. I've, I've been a teacher in church for years, thanks to the Lord by his grace, it's not me, but he's given me that opportunity for years. So I'm coming at this from someone who understands what it is to be in leadership and teaching. And, and so this is primarily directed to those of you, I believe, who are pastors and leaders and are called to be uh, verbally bold for the Lord. Um, I, for years, I felt the Lord dealing with me on issues of pride, to be honest with you. Um, I believe I began to be spiritually prideful and, and the Lord had to discipline me in that. Um, he made me realize that he put me in the position that he did to help me deliver milk and understanding to people that were new in Christ or those that were struggling in their beginning elementary stages of their relationship with the Lord. But what he made me understand is that I put you where I did to help people get started. That your job as a leader, Angie, and as a teacher where I put you is to not usurp my place in my body's life. In other words, you are to feed them milk while they're infants. But your job as a leader and a teacher is to encourage the members of my body to eventually just be directed solely to me. What, what I feel is important that we all need to understand as teachers and pastors is that God uses us to feed lambs. In other words, when each of us had our children and we put them in high chairs and, and we hand fed them and we gave them their bottles every night, uh, those children didn't stay babies forever. They grew up. Um, as a matter of fact, you can see this transformation even in the Song of Solomon where the bride starts out in infancy and then the Lord takes her to maturity in him. I mean, from beginning to the end of the Song of Solomon, this is pictured. Um, we see John the Baptist, Jesus' cousin, uh, saying, I must become less and he must become greater. John was used as a forerunner and as a voice to draw people and, and initiate the message. But he eventually said, the bride belongs to the bridegroom. John knew his place, that he was not to feel that he was the primary teacher or, or that he was the primary leader. He always directed them to the Lord. What I'm trying to say here is that I am not, I am not by any means saying that pastoring and teaching is not used by the Lord. He, it definitely is, and he established that. So I wanted to clarify my stance on this. I believe what I was trying to get across yesterday and maybe didn't do it, um, I, I didn't articulate that clearly enough, I see people that have stayed children on, on the milk of the word being preached to them, milk from pulpits and classrooms and, and, and study guides and 10 steps to get to know the Lord instead of going on to maturity to take hold of Christ themselves as he has taken hold of them. In other words, which one of us as parents continues to bottle feed and hand feed our children when they're in their 20s? I have two sons that are in their 20s and out on their own. And if I came up to them and said, you boys need to continue to depend on me to bottle feed you and hand feed you, they'd think I was crazy. In other words, mom, you, you gave us a good start. You fed us the milk, you got us started. Now we wanna pick up that fork and get to the food ourselves. What I'm saying, how I feel the conviction God has led me as a teacher, okay, is that we need to encourage people, yes, to be fed milk, yes, to have someone come alongside them and guide them, you know, any new infant needs that. Any elementary um, student needs a teacher to come alongside them and help them and, and nourish them and encourage them. Jesus said, if you love me, feed my lambs. Of course. But what I'm saying is, as leaders and teachers, we also need to help them grow into him who is the head. That That is so vitally important that we, Paul wanted to see people all come to the maturity of the faith and grow into him who is the head. Paul never diverted attention to himself or any of the the prophets and teachers that God used, they were used to help nourish the people, to build them up and edify them to go after Christ themselves into maturity. This is what my message was about, is that I see people that have walked with the Lord for years, and I'm saying this humbly, that maybe in their 50s or 60s or 70s and are still not seeking the Lord themselves. They've walked with the Lord for this long, 
and yet they will not deviate outside of what a pastor tells them or, or a discipleship program gives them or a book. That's all I'm saying is that we need to get to the point where we ask the Lord to mature us, to take hold of him as a bride would take hold of her bridegroom. I think it's very important, especially in these last days where there's so much deception out there. There's so many books and programs and TV evangelists that can easily distract the body of Christ from simplicity of just coming to him themselves. Yes, the Lord did use teachers and books and programs with me when he first drew me to himself 25 years ago. I am, I am forever thankful that he put people in my path to disciple me, to help me, to feed me the milk and get me started. But then the Lord began to draw me to himself and said, Angie, I'm going to draw you and I'm going to teach you things and I want you to keep your eyes fixed on me and I'm going to now take you to a place of maturity where you will live with me as a mature bride lives with her bridegroom face to face. But yes, this takes time. So absolutely, if you're a pastor or a teacher and God's put you there, yes, these people that are new in the Lord or maybe are on elementary walk with him, they need to be fed and encouraged. It's very easy when they're new in Christ to be distracted by the enemy have false doctrine come in and, and, and fool them and deceive them. We, we need to expose these things and help people. But part of our responsibility, I believe, as teachers or pastors, is that we don't let people that sit under our teaching or pastoring feel that we keep them in perpetual dependence on us. And what I mean perpetual is that we give them this impression that they have to perpetually come to us for their feeding and for their maturity. Um, like I said, I'm humbly submitting this to you for your judgment, but this is how the Lord has led me because I've been a teacher for years by his grace. And I'm saying that with humility, not pride, but that he had to correct me and discipline me. And Angie, when you're teaching in a classroom, I put you in a discipleship program. Yes, you're to feed and encourage and nourish, but you're also to help partner with me to lead people onto maturity with me, to a face-to-face -face intimacy of their own. Okay, so that's my conviction. That's where I feel led as a teacher. Um, but we cannot perpetually, as teachers and pastors, make people feel that we are taking the place of Christ in their life. Yes, we partner with Christ to help them get started, to help lay a foundation, to nourish, encourage, rebuke false doctrine when it comes into the church. I am absolutely on board with that. So I apologize if I gave that impression. My burning desire yesterday was to relate to people in the body of Christ that they they need to if they've walked with the Lord for years they need to start putting down the books and sitting under the tutelage of a pastor or a discipleship training leader and say you know the Lord's maturing me he's drawing me into an intimacy with himself where I can learn directly from him and I wanted to give a couple of scriptures that we can think about um, as, as leaders and, and teachers in the church that I want you to prayerfully and humbly consider so please don't take this from me as prideful but I believe that the Lord, when he moves members of his body onto maturity, this is the attitude that we should have when we are eating solid food in the Lord, okay? Galatians 1.12 says, for, neither, for I neither received it of man, nor was I taught it, but by revelation of Jesus Christ. Now, this is a mature viewpoint, all right? We are to eventually ask the Lord to mature us to the point where the revelation we receive doesn't merely come down handed down from a pulpit or a book or a program but the revelation we are to receive as as it states here in Galatians 1 12 can be directly received by revelation from Jesus Christ now this does take time and it takes maturity in the Lord but we as leaders need to encourage people to pursue the Lord for this kind of revelation and maturity in Christ for I neither received it of man nor was I taught it but by the revelation of Jesus Christ I feel convinced now this is for submit for your own judgment with the Lord and your own walk with him. But how he's using me to teach and lead is not to feel that I am the one that they're learning from. I'm simply planting seeds. I'm simply partnering with the Lord to encourage them on to maturity and to grow up into him who is the head. That their revelation of the Lord cannot be solely from me as a teacher in a classroom. And I really, I discourage that all the time and tell people that, that I'm simply being used by the Lord to plant a seed in your heart. But I want the Lord to make that seed grow and, and him to draw you into your own mature relationship with him and not be forever perpetually bottle fed or hand fed by other people. You eventually grow up and begin to take a hold of that food yourself and eat. Jesus said he is the bread of life. 
I'm not the bread of life, and neither is any other teacher or pastor. We're simply there to be spokesmen, like Paul said. Who are we but mere servants through whom the word of the Lord came? But it's the Lord who gives the growth. I'm just speaking from the heart here because I've been there. And and this, these are things I'm sharing transparently from my heart, not to be prideful at all. First John 2.27 says, But the anointing which you have received of him abides in you, and you need not that any man teach you, but as the same anointing teaches you everything, abide in him. Now granted, these scriptures were given to the mature. Paul often dealt with people that were on the milk of the word that he could not speak mature things to because they still had to be spoken to as children. I believe these scriptures are given to the mature. Those who know the Lord has drawn them onto maturity with the Lord know that there are things that are being taught to them in their spirit by the spirit of God. They know were not handed to them from a pulpit or from a book or from a program. In ending this humbly, I, I fully understand the importance of coming alongside new believers rebuking false teachers, exposing false doctrines, and looking out for those that are new in the body of Christ and that are, are infants in Christ and need to be fed and nourished and encouraged. But I feel that the Lord has put a call on my heart as a teacher in the church to encourage people to go on to maturity themselves and to take hold of Jesus themselves, take hold of their bridegroom themselves, go on to press on into him who is the head and just take my instruction or seed planting as merely that. That I'm just here, like John the Baptist was pointing the way to Christ, but John said the bride belongs to the bridegroom. And when you know you're the bride of Christ, you, there's a he begins to mature you and draw you to himself to have your own face-to-face -face relationship with him. It's our job as teachers and leaders in the church where God has put us to realize that we're simply there to point